The 1920s in Chicago, a city pulsing with energy, wealth, and a hidden world of secrets that played out beneath its glittering lights. Behind the roar of jazz music and smoke-filled speakeasies and the whispers of illicit deals, one name emerged above all others, a name that captured both the fear and fascination of a nation, Al Capone. He was a man of humble beginnings, born to a poor immigrant family in Brooklyn, New York. But Capone was never one to be defined by his circumstances. Even as a young boy, he harbored ambitions larger than life, dreams that would eventually draw him into a world of crime, power, and ultimately, legend. Al Capone was no ordinary man, and he quickly proved to be no ordinary gangster. Rising to infamy during the Prohibition era, he didn't just run a criminal empire, he crafted a legacy. From brothels to bootlegging, gambling to bribery, Capone's fingerprints were everywhere, his influence so deep that it felt as if he controlled Chicago's very soul. But there was more to him than the headlines suggested. To some, he was a ruthless villain, a man who would stop at nothing to get what he wanted. To others, he was a charismatic figure, even a modern-day Robin Hood, who helped those in need and seemed to defy authority with a daring that few could muster. For better or worse, Capone became a figure larger than life, a man both feared and admired, hated and respected. Yet, Beneath this powerful image was a story far more complex. Capone's life was a constant balancing act, a web of alliances and betrayals, successes and near downfalls. He rose to prominence not just through brute force but through cunning and intelligence, knowing whom to trust, whom to intimidate, and whom to charm. Chicago's underworld was a deadly place, and every day was a fight for survival. Capone was more than willing to play the game, but he played it by his own rules. Every deal, every bribe, every act of violence brought him closer to the pinnacle of power, yet also closer to the inevitable consequences that awaited him. What drove Capone to continue down this path? Was it the thrill, the need for control, or perhaps something deeper, something hidden even from himself? As we follow Capone's journey from his early years to his peak of power, we see the many facets of a man who was as ruthless as he was captivating. His rise was nothing short of meteoric. With every risky move, he cemented his place at the top, drawing fear from rivals and respect from followers. But every empire has its cracks, and Capone's world was no different. The very traits that had helped him rise, his ambition, his defiance of authority, his relentless drive, would soon begin to turn against him. At times, it seemed Capone was not just fighting for control of Chicago, but waging a war within himself, torn between the man he wanted to be and the man he had become. In the world Capone had crafted, friends could turn into enemies in a heartbeat, and loyalty was as rare as a quiet night in the city he ruled. Yet, Capone's grip on Chicago tightened, and with it came a heavy cost. Each success made him bolder, each victory more defiant. But for how long could one man hold such power without facing the consequences? This story isn't just about wealth or violence. It's about the very nature of power and the cost of living by one's own rules. Could Capone have chosen another path, or was he always destined to live and fall? as a king of crime? Today, we unravel the life of Al Capone, a life marked by dramatic twists, moral complexities, and a relentless hunger for control. This is not merely a tale of crime and lawlessness, but a story of human ambition, of choices made and prices paid. As we delve into his journey, we invite you to consider. Was Al Capone a true visionary of his own making, or was he, in the end, simply a product of his time, a man caught in the web of his ambitions and the ruthless world he helped to shape. This documentary will take you deep into Capone's life, peeling back the layers of myth and legend to reveal the man beneath. Prepare to explore the rise and fall of Al Capone, a figure whose story is etched into the history of America's darkest and most thrilling era, 
An era where one man dared to take it all, even as his empire teetered on the edge of ruin. Alphonse Capone was born on January 17, 1899, in Brooklyn, New York, to Italian immigrant parents, Gabrielle and Teresa Capone. The Capones were a humble family trying to make a new life in America, like so many others in their neighborhood. Gabrielle worked tirelessly as a barber, while Teresa dedicated herself to managing their home and raising their children. Life in Brooklyn was not easy, especially for immigrant families struggling to fit into the American way of life. Alphonse, or Al as he came to be known, grew up surrounded by the sights, sounds, and smells of Brooklyn's Italian neighborhoods, a place where different cultures mixed, creating both opportunities and challenges. The atmosphere was lively but tough, and this environment would come to shape much of Capone's character. Capone's time in school was brief and turbulent. While he was intelligent, his impatience and rebellious streak often got him into trouble. His tendency to act out brought him into constant clashes with authority figures, particularly teachers. Al was just 14 when he was expelled from school after an altercation with a teacher. This marked a significant turning point in his life. Without the structure of school, he spent more time on the streets, where he quickly learned the unwritten rules of survival. His quick wit and strong will made him a natural in his new environment, and he became familiar with the local gangs, eventually forging friendships and alliances that would play crucial roles in his future. After leaving school, Capone's education shifted from textbooks to the rough, unfiltered lessons of the streets. With no formal job, he soon fell under the influence of Brooklyn's notorious gangs. These gangs operated under a strict code of loyalty and survival, and they took Capone in as one of their own. Here, he met Johnny Torrio, a figure who would later become a major influence in his life. Torrio saw something in Capone, a combination of intelligence, boldness, and an unbreakable loyalty. In the gang world, loyalty was everything, and Capone's ability to inspire and command respect among his peers made him stand out. His street education began with minor crimes, but even in those early days, Capone was gaining a reputation for his daring spirit and resourcefulness. Despite the rough world outside, the Capone family was a close-knit unit. Al remained deeply connected to his family, especially to his siblings. Among them, his older brother Vincenzo, who later became known as Richard Hart, took a very different path, ultimately serving as a prohibition agent. Al's loyalty to his family was unwavering, and this sense of family duty became a central motivation throughout his life. For Capone, everything he did, legal or illegal, was to protect and provide for his family. This loyalty extended beyond his immediate relatives, encompassing his gang family as well, a quality that endeared him to both friends and allies. The Italian values that the Capones held dear, respect, loyalty, and the idea of omerta or silence profoundly influenced Al's early worldview. Within their community, these principles weren't just ideals. They were survival mechanisms in a world where the authorities weren't always on their side. Growing up with these values shaped Capone's moral code, which, though unconventional, guided his actions as he climbed the criminal ladder. For him, respect and loyalty were paramount, often demanding retribution when he felt betrayed. This Italian code of honor was something Capone carried with him into every aspect of his life and work, often using it to justify actions that were both ruthless and fiercely protective. Capone's entry into the world of serious crime began with various odd jobs, including work as a bouncer and bartender at Frankie Yale's Harvard Inn. It was here, during a violent altercation with a man, that Capone received the facial scars that earned him the nickname Scarface. The incident was brutal, leaving Capone with a visible mark that would become iconic in years to come. This experience, as brutal as it was, marked his first real encounter with the consequences of a criminal life. For Capone, violence became a tool and a language he understood, a way to establish respect and control. The streets had taught him one of their harshest lessons, 
survival often came at a price, and Capone seemed prepared to pay it. Around this time, Johnny Torrio, a rising figure in organized crime, took Capone under his wing, recognizing his potential for leadership and loyalty. Torrio was more than just a mentor. He was a strategist who saw crime not merely as chaos but as a business with its own rules and profits. Under Torrio's guidance, Capone began to see the possibilities within organized crime. The chance not just to survive but to thrive. Torrio taught him the subtleties of criminal enterprise, focusing on structure, discipline, and the benefits of alliances. Torrio's influence would shape Capone's future, encouraging him to think bigger and to view his actions as part of a larger strategy. In 1919, Torrio invited Capone to join him in Chicago, where opportunities in the illegal alcohol trade were soaring due to the recent enactment of prohibition. This invitation was a momentous one, marking Capone's departure from Brooklyn and the beginning of his rise to national infamy. Chicago, with its fast-paced, vibrant, and often corrupt atmosphere, was the perfect setting for a man like Capone to flourish. The city was a land of opportunity, and for Capone, it symbolized a new beginning, a chance to establish his empire. By the time he arrived, he was no longer the rebellious kid from Brooklyn but a hardened, ambitious man ready to make his mark. Reflecting on Capone's early years, it becomes clear that his rough upbringing, combined with the guidance of street mentors like Torrio, set the stage for his transformation. He had evolved from a wayward youth into a man equipped with the knowledge, loyalty, and ruthless determination required for his journey. When Capone stepped foot in Chicago, he was prepared to take on the city and make a name for himself. His experiences in Brooklyn had not only prepared him but had given him a hunger for success that nothing else could satisfy. As Capone's life in Chicago began, so did his path toward becoming one of the most notorious figures in American history. In Chicago, Al Capone rapidly rose to prominence, initially working under the mentorship of Johnny Torrio, who was already a key figure in the city's underground economy. Torrio, keen on expanding his criminal empire, saw Capone's potential for handling both the logistical and violent aspects of the business. Together, they aimed to capitalize on the lucrative opportunities brought by Prohibition, which had turned the sale and distribution of alcohol into a high-stakes industry controlled by gangs. Capone's early days in Chicago involved managing operations at a local brothel, an experience that taught him about the complexities of organized crime and handling illicit businesses. He was not just Torrio's protege, but also his enforcer, willing to use violence to secure territory and eliminate competition. His reputation for ruthlessness began to solidify as he dealt with rival gangs, defending Torrio's interests and expanding their influence in Chicago's South Side. This hands-on approach quickly made him indispensable to Torrio, who valued his ability to handle both negotiations and confrontations with equal proficiency. As Torrio's right-hand man, Capone began to gain more control over Chicago's bootlegging operations. The illegal alcohol trade was highly profitable, but it was also fiercely competitive. Rival gangs frequently clashed over territory, and Capone's role often involved leading retaliations and preemptive strikes against those who threatened their business. He learned that alliances were crucial in maintaining power, and he started forging connections with politicians, police officers, and other influential figures, establishing a network of protection and influence. These alliances allowed Capone's operations to function with minimal interference from law enforcement, further solidifying his position in the criminal underworld. The turning point in Capone's career came in 1925, when Johnny Torrio was ambushed by a rival gang and severely injured. After recovering, Torrio decided to retire and handed control of his entire empire to Capone. This transition marked the beginning of Capone's undisputed rule over Chicago's criminal landscape. At just 26, Capone was now in charge of a sprawling enterprise, overseeing brothels, gambling establishments, and speakeasies across the city. Unlike Torrio, who preferred to work behind the scenes, 
Capone embraced a more public persona. He relished the attention and became a larger-than-life figure, openly mingling with the public and cultivating an image as a benevolent crime lord. Capone's approach to business combined brutality with a keen sense of public relations. He positioned himself as a provider for the people, donating to charities and supporting local causes, which earned him a surprising amount of public support. Many Chicago residents viewed him as a Robin Hood figure, a man who, despite his illegal activities, gave back to the community. This public image was carefully crafted, as Capone understood that maintaining the goodwill of the people could shield him from scrutiny and foster loyalty. However, his philanthropic gestures were only one side of his rule. Behind the scenes, he continued to employ violence to maintain control and eliminate rivals. Throughout the late 1920s, Capone's influence over Chicago grew as he expanded his empire to include politicians, police, and other city officials. His bribes kept law enforcement at bay, allowing his operations to flourish virtually unchallenged. Capone's wealth and power reached unprecedented levels, with his empire generating millions of dollars annually from illegal alcohol sales alone. Despite the risks, he ensured his business was well protected through a network of loyal enforcers who were ready to carry out his orders without question. His ability to balance intimidation with strategic alliances made him nearly untouchable, and his criminal empire became a model of organized crime efficiency. Capone's rise to prominence, however, was not without its challenges. Rival gangs continuously sought to undermine his operations, leading to a series of bloody confrontations known as the Beer Wars. These violent conflicts culminated in the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929, where seven members of a rival gang were brutally gunned down, an act widely believed to have been orchestrated by Capone's men. This event shocked the nation, drawing intense media coverage and bringing unprecedented attention to Capone's activities. Though he was never directly linked to the massacre, it painted him as a ruthless figure, solidifying his reputation as America's most infamous gangster. Despite the negative publicity surrounding the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Capone remained in control, with his empire continuing to thrive. However, the increased attention also put him on the federal government's radar. In an attempt to bring him down, federal agents began investigating his finances, seeking evidence of tax evasion. Capone, who had previously managed to evade law enforcement through bribes and legal loopholes, found himself in a precarious situation. The pressure mounted as federal agencies became determined to end his reign, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his life that would eventually lead to his downfall. Capone's rise to power was a testament to his resourcefulness, charisma, and willingness to do whatever it took to maintain control. He had transformed from a streetwise Brooklyn boy into the kingpin of Chicago's criminal underworld, leaving an indelible mark on American history. His influence extended beyond the criminal world, shaping the city's politics, law enforcement, and social dynamics in profound ways. But as his empire reached its zenith, the forces determined to bring him down grew stronger, setting the stage for the inevitable clash that would define the final chapter of his career. Al Capone's dominance in Chicago's criminal underworld was marked by a series of pivotal events and intense conflicts that both defined and challenged his empire. In the years following his rise, Capone faced constant competition, internal strife, and escalating violence, all of which tested his grip on power and his strategies for maintaining control. These major events showcased Capone's calculated ruthlessness, his deep understanding of power, and his skill in navigating the volatile environment of organized crime during the Prohibition era. The following events and conflicts ultimately shaped Capone's career, marking both the height of his influence and the beginning of his downfall. As the 1920s progressed, Capone's gang was embroiled in a brutal conflict known as the Beer Wars, a battle for control over Chicago's illegal alcohol market. Prohibition had turned the city's streets into a battlefield, with numerous gangs vying for territory and profits. 
Capone's organization was by far the most powerful, but he faced persistent challenges from rivals like the Northside Gang, led by George Bugs Moran. Capone's approach was both strategic and ruthless. He sought not only to dominate the alcohol market, but to eliminate any potential threats to his empire. This conflict escalated as Capone's men engaged in frequent shootouts and ambushes, employing violence to send a clear message to his adversaries. These skirmishes took place in broad daylight, often in crowded areas, creating an atmosphere of fear and chaos in Chicago. The public and authorities became increasingly concerned as the city transformed into a war zone, with Capone's organization at the center of the conflict. The most infamous event of the Beer Wars was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, a brutal incident that epitomized the violence of Capone's reign. On February 14, seven members of Bugs Moran's Northside Gang were gunned down in a garage, executed by men posing as police officers. Although Capone was in Florida at the time and never formally implicated, the massacre was widely attributed to him. This event shocked the nation and solidified Capone's reputation as a cold-blooded crime lord, willing to resort to extreme measures to eliminate his enemies. The massacre drew unprecedented media attention, and Capone became a household name across the United States. While the public had previously viewed him with a mix of fascination and fear, the massacre marked a turning point. Capone's image as a Robin Hood figure began to deteriorate, replaced by that of a merciless killer. In the wake of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, law enforcement efforts to apprehend Capone intensified. Local authorities, who had long been under Capone's influence through bribery and intimidation, faced mounting pressure from the federal government to crack down on organized crime in Chicago. Recognizing the challenge posed by Capone's extensive network of protection, federal agencies began investigating his financial activities, seeking a legal route to bring him down. The Bureau of Prohibition, along with the Internal Revenue Service IRS, launched a joint operation to scrutinize Capone's income and prove his involvement in tax evasion, a crime that would ultimately lead to his downfall. This marked the beginning of a relentless pursuit, as federal agents followed every financial trail and interrogated Capone's associates to gather evidence against him. While the authorities pursued their investigation, Capone continued to face opposition from rival gangs. Despite his dominance, other criminal groups in Chicago sought to carve out their share of the lucrative bootlegging business. Capone's men frequently engaged in violent clashes with smaller gangs who refused to submit to his authority. These conflicts kept Capone under constant pressure, as he had to continually defend his empire from both internal and external threats. Even within his own organization, loyalty was never guaranteed. The high stakes of organized crime bred betrayal and distrust among Capone's associates. To maintain control, Capone relied heavily on enforcers like Frank Nitti and Tony Accardo, who were instrumental in keeping rival factions in check and ensuring that any potential mutiny within his organization was swiftly dealt with. One of the defining aspects of Capone's rule was his ability to manipulate the media and public opinion. Despite the growing violence associated with his empire, Capone maintained a high public profile, frequently appearing at public events and portraying himself as a benefactor to Chicago's poor. He donated to charities, organized soup kitchens, and provided financial support to struggling families during the Great Depression, which won him a measure of public sympathy. This image of Capone as a man of the people was in stark contrast to his violent methods, creating a complex public persona that intrigued and confused the American public. However, as federal agents closed in on him, Capone's attempts to sway public opinion became less effective. The FBI and IRS made it clear that they were committed to bringing him to justice, regardless of his attempts to portray himself in a positive light. The final years of Capone's reign were marked by a dramatic shift in his fortunes. Despite his best efforts to evade the authorities, the evidence against him was mounting. In 1931, Capone was finally indicted on charges of tax evasion a charge that he had never anticipated would be his undoing. 
The trial was a major media event, drawing national attention as Capone faced a judge and jury. Prosecutors presented a well-organized case, meticulously detailing Capone's financial records and demonstrating his failure to pay taxes on his vast income. Capone's lawyers attempted to defend him by challenging the credibility of the evidence and arguing procedural errors, but the prosecution's case was too strong. After a brief trial, Capone was convicted and sentenced to 11 years in federal prison, marking the end of his dominance in Chicago's underworld. The consequences of Capone's conviction were far-reaching. His incarceration represented a significant victory for law enforcement in their battle against organized crime. It also signaled the decline of Chicago's gang violence, as other crime syndicates realized that even the most powerful mob bosses could be brought down by legal means. Capone's imprisonment marked a shift in the public's perception of organized crime. He had been seen as an untouchable figure, but his downfall proved that no one was beyond the reach of justice. Although Capone continued to exert some influence from prison, his health deteriorated due to syphilis, and he was eventually released on parole in 1939 after serving nearly eight years. Capone's downfall was a complex and multifaceted event, symbolizing the end of an era in organized crime. His conviction marked the culmination of years of violence, conflict, and calculated strategies that had propelled him to the top of the criminal hierarchy. The events and conflicts that defined his career left a lasting impact on American society, shaping public attitudes toward organized crime and inspiring future generations of law enforcement to pursue justice relentlessly. Even after his death, Capone's legacy remained ingrained in American popular culture, a symbol of both the allure and the consequences of unchecked ambition in the world of organized crime. Al Capone's life reached a dramatic climax marked by a series of pivotal moments that underscored both his rise to power and the inevitable consequences of his actions. This climax encapsulated the tensions of the Prohibition era, highlighting Capone's transformation from a notorious gangster to a symbolic figure of organized crime in America. As law enforcement intensified their efforts to dismantle his empire, the stakes escalated, leading to a final showdown that would seal his fate and change the landscape of organized crime forever. The following sections detail the key events leading up to this climax, capturing the turmoil of the period and the forces that ultimately led to Capone's downfall. As the 1920s progressed, the prohibition laws created a lucrative yet dangerous environment for organized crime. Capone had established himself as the kingpin of Chicago's underworld, controlling the lucrative illegal alcohol trade. However, this success did not come without a price. Rival gangs, primarily the North Side Gang led by Bugs Moran, sought to challenge Capone's dominance. The competition for control of the lucrative bootlegging operations fueled a cycle of violence that swept through the streets of Chicago with gangland shootings becoming a common occurrence. This ongoing conflict not only showcased Capone's ruthlessness, but also revealed the fragility of his empire, as each skirmish threatened to undermine the stability he had worked so hard to achieve. The tension between Capone and Moran culminated in the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929. On February 14th, seven members of Moran's gang were brutally murdered in a garage, executed in a meticulously planned ambush. Though Capone was in Florida at the time and denied any involvement, the event was a watershed moment in the history of organized crime. The brutality of the massacre shocked the nation and heightened public awareness of the violent underbelly of prohibition. It also drew the attention of law enforcement agencies, both local and federal, who were under increasing pressure to restore order and bring the perpetrators to justice. Capone's notoriety soared, and while he basked in the media spotlight, the ramifications of the massacre began to unfold, setting the stage for the intensified law enforcement response that would ultimately lead to his downfall. In the aftermath of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Capone's ability to manipulate public perception began to wane. Law enforcement agencies, particularly the federal government, 
recognized that Capone's influence extended far beyond Chicago. His network of corruption reached into local law enforcement and even political circles, allowing him to operate with relative impunity. However, the St. Valentine's Day massacre marked a turning point in public sentiment. The brutality of the incident led to increased scrutiny of Capone's empire and law enforcement agencies, including the Bureau of Prohibition and the Internal Revenue Service IRS, intensified their investigations. Capone, who had once portrayed himself as a benefactor of the city, now faced mounting pressure from a public outraged by the violence that had spilled into their neighborhoods. With the federal government increasingly focused on bringing Capone to justice, they sought to dismantle his financial empire as a means of undermining his power. Recognizing that conventional criminal charges would be difficult to pursue given Capone's extensive network of influence, federal agents began to investigate his finances. They meticulously examined his records for evidence of tax evasion, a charge that could lead to significant penalties and possibly imprisonment. The IRS assembled a dedicated team of agents to scrutinize Capone's income, focusing on his lavish lifestyle and opulent expenditures, which were starkly inconsistent with his reported earnings. This financial investigation represented a shift in strategy. Instead of relying solely on traditional methods of law enforcement, they aimed to expose the very foundation of Capone's criminal empire. As Capone continued to evade law enforcement efforts, he became increasingly paranoid, reflecting the stress of his precarious position. Despite his outward confidence, the pressure of being pursued by the federal government weighed heavily on him. He fortified his operations and surrounded himself with loyal enforcers to ensure his security. Capone's inner circle was composed of men who were not only skilled in violence, but also fiercely loyal to him. This loyalty was crucial as tensions mounted within his organization. As the stakes escalated, internal dissent became a concern, with rumors of betrayal and disloyalty permeating the ranks. Capone's leadership style, which had been characterized by intimidation and brutality, began to show cracks as his associates weighed their options amid the growing pressure from law enforcement and rival gangs. The climax of Capone's story unfolded in 1931, culminating in his arrest and subsequent trial for tax evasion. As federal agents closed in, they presented a well-documented case against him, detailing a web of financial misdeeds that could not be easily dismissed. The trial itself became a media spectacle, attracting attention from across the nation. Capone's high-profile legal battle captivated the public, as journalists and spectators flocked to the courthouse to witness the proceedings. The prosecution painted a damning picture of Capone's empire, presenting evidence that exposed his financial dealings and alleged criminal activities. Capone's defense team, while skilled, struggled to counter the overwhelming evidence presented by the government. The trial was marked by dramatic moments, with Capone's bravado increasingly overshadowed by the mounting evidence against him. As the trial progressed, Capone's attempts to maintain his public persona began to falter. The prosecution effectively undermined his carefully crafted image as a charismatic figure, revealing the cold reality of his criminal empire. The public's fascination with Capone transformed into a sense of outrage as the evidence of his misdeeds became undeniable. Despite his initial confidence, Capone realized that he was trapped in a legal system that was finally determined to hold him accountable. As the jury deliberated, the tension reached its peak, culminating in a moment that would forever change the course of Capone's life. In October 1931, the jury returned with a guilty verdict, convicting Capone of tax evasion. The sentence was a harsh blow, resulting in an 11-year prison term and significant fines. Capone's empire, which had seemed invincible, crumbled as law enforcement and rival gangs seized the opportunity to fill the power vacuum left in the wake of his arrest. Capone's fall from grace was swift. He went from being the most powerful mob boss in America to a convicted felon facing the harsh realities of federal prison life. 
The climax of his story not only marked the end of his reign, but also served as a turning point in the fight against organized crime, signaling to other criminals that even the most powerful figures were not above the law. As Capone began his sentence at the U.S. Penitentiary in Atlanta, the consequences of his actions reverberated throughout the nation. His imprisonment represented a significant victory for law enforcement, but it also highlighted the complexities of combating organized crime. Capone's downfall exposed the vulnerabilities within the criminal justice system, as well as the lengths to which organized crime had infiltrated society. In the years following his imprisonment, Capone's health deteriorated due to syphilis, further solidifying the tragic trajectory of a man whose ambition had once seemed boundless. The climax of his life story serves as a cautionary tale, illustrating the fleeting nature of power and the inevitable consequences that accompany a life of crime. Ultimately, Al Capone's life reached its climax through a series of dramatic events that intertwined violence, ambition, and law enforcement efforts. The culmination of these events not only defined Capone's legacy, but also marked a turning point in American history reshaping the landscape of organized crime and the public's perception of it. As Capone faded from the spotlight, the lessons learned from his rise and fall remained etched in the annals of crime, serving as a reminder of the costs associated with unchecked ambition and the pursuit of power. The resolution and decline of Al Capone's life present a poignant reflection on the consequences of his actions and the inevitable fallout of a life steeped in crime. Following his conviction for tax evasion in 1931, Capone's world began to unravel, culminating in a series of events that underscored the profound impact of his criminal empire on both his personal life and the broader societal landscape. This section delves into the key developments during this period, illustrating how Capone's decline mirrored the shifting tides of organized crime in America. Upon entering federal prison, Al Capone faced the stark reality of incarceration. Initially sentenced to 11 years, he was placed in the U.S. Penitentiary in Atlanta, a facility known for its strict discipline. The transition from being a powerful mob boss to a convict was jarring. Capone struggled to adapt to the harsh prison environment, where he was stripped of his influence and authority. His reputation as a feared gangster was rendered meaningless behind bars, and he quickly realized that his wealth and connections could not shield him from the consequences of his past actions. Life in prison was marked by the challenges of maintaining his identity and asserting control in an environment designed to strip inmates of their power. Capone's health began to deteriorate during his time in prison, exacerbated by his long-standing battle with syphilis, which had gone untreated for years. This medical condition not only affected his physical well-being, but also took a toll on his mental state. Reports indicate that Capone experienced severe mood swings and cognitive decline, further isolating him from the world he once dominated. As he grappled with his deteriorating health, Capone also faced the reality that his empire had crumbled in his absence. The once formidable organization he had built began to fragment, with former associates seeking power and influence in a post-Capone landscape. In 1934, Capone was transferred to Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, a facility known for housing the most dangerous criminals. This move was significant, as Alcatraz was designed to be inescapable, ensuring that high-profile inmates could no longer exert influence from within. Capone's arrival at Alcatraz marked a turning point, he was now confined in a maximum security environment, where he had little room for maneuvering. The isolation of Alcatraz further compounded Capone's decline, as he found himself cut off from the outside world and the networks that had once bolstered his power. The prison's strict regulations and lack of privileges served as a stark reminder of the life he had lost, amplifying his sense of defeat. As Capone's health continued to decline, the realities of his situation became increasingly apparent. He was diagnosed with advanced syphilis, which had progressed to a stage that severely impacted his mental faculties and physical capabilities. Reports of Capone's health struggle surfaced, 
revealing a man once feared and respected now reduced to a shadow of his former self. The vibrant personality that had commanded attention and respect was slowly fading as he grappled with the cognitive impairments associated with his illness. This decline served as a tragic reminder of the personal costs of his criminal lifestyle, underscoring the notion that even the most powerful figures are not immune to the consequences of their choices. Capone's time in Alcatraz was characterized by a mixture of solitude and fleeting moments of connection with fellow inmates. Although he attempted to maintain a facade of control, the isolation of prison life was palpable. The friendships he had cultivated outside of prison became distant memories, and the camaraderie he had once shared with his associates was replaced by an environment of distrust and competition among inmates. Capone's efforts to navigate prison politics often fell short, as he struggled to adapt to the rigid hierarchy that dictated life behind bars. The irony of his situation was not lost on him. A man who had once controlled the streets of Chicago now found himself powerless within the confines of a prison cell. Despite the challenges he faced, Capone's notoriety persisted even within the prison walls. His name still resonated among inmates and guards alike, and stories of his past exploits continued to circulate. However, these stories became less about admiration and more about cautionary tales of the dangers of a life entrenched in crime. Capone became emblematic of the dangers of the gangster lifestyle, as his decline served as a potent reminder of the eventual consequences that awaited those who sought power through illicit means. The transformation from feared mobster to a man grappling with the realities of his choices was profound, illustrating the tragic trajectory of his life. In 1939, after serving nearly eight years of his sentence, Capone was released from prison on parole. However, his freedom was not the triumphant return he may have envisioned. Capone was a broken man, both physically and mentally, and the world he had once ruled had changed dramatically in his absence. The public perception of organized crime was shifting, and the rise of new players in the underworld signaled a changing of the guard. Capone's former associates had either been imprisoned, killed, or turned against him, leaving him isolated in a landscape he no longer recognized. The power and influence he had once wielded were replaced by a sense of vulnerability and loss. Following his release, Capone retreated to his Florida estate, where he sought solace in the tranquil surroundings of Palm Island. The lavish lifestyle he once enjoyed was now overshadowed by the toll of his past. Capone struggled to reintegrate into society, battling both the physical effects of his illness and the psychological impact of his criminal past. The glitz and glamour of his former life felt distant, as he attempted to navigate the complexities of a world that had moved on without him. Despite his wealth, the isolation he experienced was profound, leading to a sense of loneliness that haunted him in his final years. As Capone faced the reality of his decline, he also grappled with the legacy he would leave behind. The mythos surrounding his life persisted, with Capone remaining a figure of fascination for the public. However, the romanticized image of the gangster began to fade, replaced by a more nuanced understanding of the destructive nature of organized crime. Documentaries, books, and films explored his life, often focusing on the complexities of his character and the moral ambiguities of his actions. Capone's story became a cautionary tale, reflecting the pitfalls of ambition and the inevitable consequences of a life of crime. In the final years of his life, Capone's health continued to deteriorate as he battled the effects of syphilis, which had severely impacted his mental acuity. The vibrant personality that had once commanded attention was now a shadow of its former self. Reports emerged of Capone experiencing severe mood swings and difficulty recognizing loved ones, a tragic turn for a man who had once been at the center of Chicago's vibrant social scene. His decline was further compounded by a sense of regret and loss, as he reflected on the choices that had led him to this point. Al Capone passed away on January 25, 1947, 
at the age of 48. His death marked the end of an era in organized crime, as the notorious gangster who had once ruled Chicago faded into history. In death, Capone remained a symbol of the complexities of the American gangster mythos, embodying both the allure and the consequences of a life lived on the edge. His legacy endured, influencing popular culture and shaping the public's perception of organized crime for decades to come. The resolution and decline of Capone's life serve as a poignant reminder of the transient nature of power and the inescapable consequences of one's choices, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of criminal history. Ultimately, the resolution and decline of Al Capone provide a comprehensive understanding of the man behind the myth. His life encapsulated the rise and fall of organized crime in America, serving as a testament to the complexities of ambition, power, and the inevitable consequences that accompany a life lived outside the law. As the dust settled on his tumultuous life, Capone's story became a cautionary tale, reminding future generations of the transient nature of power and the profound impact of one's choices on their legacy. Al Capone's legacy extends far beyond the confines of his criminal enterprises, it has permeated American culture, law enforcement practices, and societal discussions on morality and crime. His life and actions serve as a lens through which we can explore the complexities of organized crime and its lasting effects on society. This section delves into the multifaceted legacy of Capone, examining how his influence has shaped both historical and contemporary perspectives on crime, law enforcement, and popular culture. Capone's life is often seen as emblematic of the Prohibition era, a period marked by the 18th Amendment, which sought to eliminate alcohol consumption in the United States. Instead of achieving its intended goals, Prohibition catalyzed a significant rise in organized crime, with figures like Capone at the forefront. His ability to flourish in a climate that criminalized alcohol consumption highlighted the societal contradictions of the time. On one hand, there was a push for moral reform and the promotion of temperance. On the other, there was a rampant demand for alcohol that drove people to break the law. Capone's success during this period forced a re-evaluation of the effectiveness of prohibition, showcasing how attempts to legislate morality can lead to unintended consequences. Capone's notoriety as a gangster did not merely rest on his illegal activities. It was also shaped by the image he cultivated. His charismatic personality, coupled with his extravagant lifestyle, turned him into a folk hero for many. Capone was often portrayed in the media as a Robin Hood figure, a man who, despite his criminal background, provided for the poor and marginalized in his community. This duality complicates the public perception of Capone as it raises questions about the morality of his actions. Was he a villain in a suit? Or was he a product of a society that failed to provide legitimate opportunities? This ambiguity continues to influence discussions around crime and morality, particularly regarding the social conditions that give rise to criminal behavior. The cinematic portrayal of Al Capone has played a significant role in shaping his legacy. From classic films to contemporary television shows, his life has been dramatized and romanticized, often blurring the lines between fact and fiction. Movies such as Scarface, The Untouchables, and Public Enemies have immortalized Capone as a symbol of the gangster lifestyle, showcasing the allure and danger associated with organized crime. This glorification of Capone raises ethical questions about the impact of media portrayals on public perception. By romanticizing figures like Capone, the media risks overshadowing the real-life consequences of their actions, including violence and the destruction of communities. The narrative around Capone serves as a reminder of the responsibility that filmmakers and storytellers hold in representing historical figures accurately. Capone's influence is also evident in the evolution of law enforcement practices in the United States. The challenges posed by his criminal empire and the broader context of organized crime during Prohibition led to significant changes in how law enforcement approached crime fighting. The FBI, under J. Edgar Hoover, 
recognized the need for specialized units to combat organized crime syndicates. Capone's notorious evasion of law enforcement prompted a re-evaluation of investigative techniques, ultimately leading to the development of new strategies that would become standard practice in the fight against organized crime. The legacy of Capone can be seen in contemporary law enforcement efforts to dismantle organized crime, as the tactics employed to take down Capone's empire have influenced modern practices. Moreover, Capone's life has sparked important discussions about the socio-economic factors contributing to crime. His rise to power can be traced back to the harsh realities of his upbringing and the socio-political landscape of early 20th century America. As a child of Italian immigrants, Capone experienced the struggles associated with poverty and marginalization. His story illustrates how systemic issues, such as lack of access to education and economic opportunities, can drive individuals toward a life of crime. This discourse has prompted sociologists and criminologists to explore the intersection of poverty, crime, and social mobility, advocating for a deeper understanding of the factors that contribute to criminal behavior. Capone's legacy also reflects the ongoing complexities of organized crime in America. His methods and strategies were emulated by subsequent generations of criminals, establishing patterns that have continued to shape organized crime. The rise of new crime families and the evolution of criminal enterprises demonstrate the cyclical nature of organized crime. Capone's influence can still be felt in the tactics employed by modern gangs underscoring the need for adaptive law enforcement strategies to combat evolving criminal enterprises. In discussing Capone's impact, it is essential to acknowledge the ethical dilemmas surrounding his legacy. While some view him as a cultural icon, his criminal activities had far-reaching consequences for individuals and communities. The violence that accompanied his rise to power, marked by gang wars and murders, created an atmosphere of fear and instability in Chicago. The collateral damage of his empire often affected innocent bystanders, raising important questions about the glorification of criminal figures in popular culture. This tension between admiration for Capone's audacity and recognition of the harm he caused complicates the narrative of his legacy, prompting critical reflection on the implications of romanticizing crime. Capone's story also serves as a cautionary tale about the pursuit of power and the consequences that can ensue. His eventual downfall, marked by legal troubles and imprisonment, underscores the idea that the pursuit of wealth and influence through illegal means ultimately leads to self-destruction. The lessons drawn from Capone's life resonate with contemporary discussions about ambition, ethics, and the choices individuals make in their pursuit of success. His narrative invites viewers to reflect on the choices they make and the moral implications of their actions, challenging them to consider the long-term consequences of their pursuits. As society continues to grapple with issues related to crime and morality, Al Capone's legacy remains relevant. His life serves as a reminder of the complexities inherent in human behavior, the allure of power, and the societal conditions that give rise to criminality. The discussions surrounding Capone invite viewers to engage critically with the historical context of his life while considering the modern implications of organized crime and its impact on communities. In conclusion, the legacy and impact of Al Capone are vast and multifaceted, touching upon cultural, societal, and historical dimensions. His influence on popular culture, law enforcement practices, and discussions about crime and morality continues to shape perceptions of organized crime in America. As a cultural icon, Capone represents the duality of the American dream, an aspiration that can lead to both success and destruction. His life story serves as a lens through which we can explore the complexities of crime, society, and the human condition ensuring that his legacy endures as a topic of reflection and discourse for generations to come. Capone's narrative challenges us to confront the realities of crime, the impact of societal conditions, and the moral implications of our choices, making it a crucial part of the ongoing conversation about justice and humanity.
The life and legacy of Al Capone encapsulate a remarkable yet turbulent chapter in American history. From his rise as a prominent figure in organized crime during the Prohibition era to his eventual downfall, Capone's story reflects the complexities of ambition, morality, and the socioeconomic landscape of early 20th century America. His legacy extends beyond the notorious criminal activities he orchestrated. It prompts critical reflections on the interplay between crime, society, and law enforcement, illustrating how one individual's choices can have far-reaching implications. Capone's journey began in humble surroundings, shaped by his experiences as an immigrant in a rapidly changing society. His early life was marked by poverty and limited opportunities, circumstances that ultimately influenced his path toward organized crime. As he ascended the ranks of Chicago's criminal underworld, Capone personified the contradictions of the American dream. While he achieved immense wealth and notoriety, the methods he employed raised ethical questions about the price of success. The allure of power and wealth can lead individuals to compromise their morals, a theme that resonates throughout Capone's life story and continues to echo in discussions about ambition and integrity today. The era of prohibition served as a crucial backdrop for Capone's rise to power. The enforcement of the 18th Amendment not only catalyzed a significant increase in organized crime, but also revealed the complexities of legislating morality. Capone thrived in this environment, capitalizing on the demand for illicit alcohol and solidifying his status as a criminal mastermind. His ability to evade law enforcement for so long highlighted the challenges faced by authorities in combating organized crime, leading to a re-evaluation of law enforcement strategies that would have lasting implications for future generations. As we reflect on Capone's impact, it is essential to recognize the duality of his legacy. While he has been portrayed as a charming, larger-than-life figure in popular culture, it is crucial to remember the real-world consequences of his actions. The violence and chaos that accompanied his criminal empire caused significant harm to countless individuals and communities. This tension between admiration for his audacity and acknowledgement of the devastation he brought complicates the narrative of Capone's life, encouraging critical engagement with the ethics of glorifying criminal figures. Capone's story is also a cautionary tale about the pursuit of power and the inevitable consequences that can follow. His downfall, marked by legal troubles and imprisonment, serves as a stark reminder that the quest for wealth and influence through illegal means often leads to self-destruction. This lesson resonates in contemporary discussions about ambition and the moral dilemmas individuals face in their pursuit of success encouraging viewers to reflect on the choices they make and their long-term implications. Moreover, Capone's influence is evident in the evolution of law enforcement practices and the ongoing challenges posed by organized crime. The strategies employed to combat his criminal empire have shaped modern approaches to tackling organized crime, demonstrating the need for adaptive and specialized law enforcement efforts. This evolution underscores the importance of understanding the historical context of crime and its relationship to societal conditions as we continue to confront the complexities of organized crime today. Al Capone's legacy is a multifaceted reflection of the American experience, capturing the complexities of crime, ambition, and societal challenges. His life invites us to grapple with the ethical questions surrounding morality, justice, and the consequences of our choices. As society continues to navigate the issues of organized crime and its impact on communities, Capone's story remains relevant, a reminder of the enduring complexities of the human experience. In examining his life, we are compelled to engage critically with the narratives of crime and morality that shape our understanding of justice and humanity, ensuring that the lessons of the past resonate as we move forward into the future. Ultimately, Capone's legacy serves as a mirror, reflecting not only the realities of his time, but also the ongoing struggles and aspirations of society in its quest for a more just and equitable world.